welcome. I am here today with my friend and chiropractor, Dr. Sean Kilgannon. And we are going to be talking about posture um, and how to avoid injury and strain and how to take care of our bodies so that we can play the piano forever and ever. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, okay, so Dr. Kilgannon has a love of music, which makes us even better. You play a few instruments. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, a little bit of piano. Yay. <laughs> play guitar, uh, drums a little bit, and sing. So this is perfect. So we're just going to, I think we should just dive right in. Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, because I have had to go for treatments because I get very sore in my forearms. Um, I think it's a combination of typing and playing. But before we get to that stuff, I think maybe just a conversation on general posture at the piano. Sure. So when I sit at the piano, I try to have my feet flat on the floor. Mm -hmm. I think about straight back. And then I place my hands like this on the keys. How do I look? Uh, pretty good. Uh, the feet are great. Are you using your pedals? Or? Yes. When I do, okay. I put my foot forward and then I keep my heel on the floor and I do this. Okay. Do you feel any pressure in your back when you do that? On like here. Okay. A little bit. So we probably have some stability things that we have to work on, some core strength issues. Uh, yeah. yeah that That's the whole balance, a proprioception thing that we, we talked about in the past, but we'll, we'll get a hold of that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, a lot of us, so we, we tend to live like this. Yeah, that in, seems in good. In this position. So what we want to try to focus on is getting that low back to tuck in. And basically, if we tuck the low back in, like putting the pelvis up like this, yeah. um, Ooh, our okay. spine stacks on the discs, and Ooh. then we're not hanging on the ligaments. So as soon as you let that low back, if you let that low back go a little bit, you can feel your, your body just slump. Like this. Yeah, and this very easily becomes out of a proper position. Okay. So we don't want people to jerk their shoulders back like that because they'll just fatigue the muscles in here. Okay. So basically what you want to do, the easy thing is to tuck your pelvis like this, okay. and it just kind of naturally stacks up. Good posture should be really low, uh, little energy that we're using. Okay. So basically we're balancing on our spine, and we're just firing the muscles to try to hold us in that balanced position. That's wild. Yeah. I never actually thought about tucking my pelvis. I had to bring my bench in a little closer to make that happen. Because I felt like I was like on the edge of my bottom. Yeah. Okay. So most people, they'll, they'll jerk shoulders back, they'll get burning and tension in through here. Yeah, yeah. And it becomes very uncomfortable. Okay, so this can so be you chill. So you need those nice relaxed shoulders that you have. Yeah. Winning, winning. And then as long as you're, um, you're moving your arms, it's just you're not putting a torque on your wrists. Mm, okay, so. That where it becomes tricky. This is like something that would be common to practice is an arpeggio, which I'm playing terribly, but you see the movement in the wrist here? Yep. Do you think that could become fatiguing or problematic? It can. That's why you have to stay very strong and um, supple in your muscles in your arm. How do you be strong so, and supple? So you do strength training and oh. stretching. <laughs> so you have that flexibility. Okay. Yeah. Which will allow you to do the movements without straining things. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And then you have the strength to continue over, to over time. To keep it going. So, yeah. so actually supplementing, so for the serious players out there, supplementing with a little bit of like a fitness routine is a good idea. Oh, super, yeah. I think super we all important. probably should do that in life yeah. as a general rule. Yep. Okay. So I'm trying to remember, because as I get going, I find that I like this, this comes out here. Mm -hmm. So it's about remembering to keep that, that tucked a bit. Okay, and not overcompensating with the pull of the back of the shoulders. Yeah, but just and with the tuck, it should feel natural. It should feel relaxed. It just feels like a, like a little micro adjustment. And yeah. when I do it, it's like, oh, that's better. Yeah. And I almost rely on my feet a and bit more. And you should more. feel less tension up through here. Yeah, I do. That's a really And that allows idea. you to drop your shoulders down, which gets you into that comfortable playing position. Right. Yeah. I feel like as we focus, we tend to tense our shoulders up. So the, I used to have a sticky note on my piano that said, drop your shoulders. Yeah. And that was helpful. Um, the other thing is when we're looking, like I'll put this up, when yeah. we're looking at our music, how bad is this, this posture, this shape? Again, you're coming off that center of gravity here. Right, okay. So if you're able to, yeah, if you have to adjust your seat a little bit. Okay, okay. Wear, wear glasses. <laughs> okay, wear glasses. Bright light so you can see your music. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that'll, okay, yeah. so I'm feeling good. Yeah, because as soon as you do this, you put that strain through here. On the back of the neck. So if we can keep it up. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we talked a little bit before we started um, shooting today about warming up. Mm -hmm. So when I think about warming up at the piano, I think about doing this or a little finger exercise. Yeah. But is there something before that maybe? There's a little bit more, yeah. Because you're <laughs> using muscles all through your body okay. uh, for the posture, Yep. it's good to get a whole body stretch or warm up going. Okay. Um, so yoga is one thing that you do that'll focus on your balance okay. and your strength and, and positioning. Okay. 
So, and it'll get blood flow to everything. Because right, you're okay. going to be using your traps, you're going to be using your low back muscles, okay. your hip flexors. So if you do a, a good 10 minute warm up thing. Welcome to, to piano flow, yoga. Yeah. I've been saying this for years. I really want to do yo piano yoga. Okay, that's yeah. coming up. All yes, right. that'll, that'll be coming up. Yes. So that's a great way to start. So if you get blood flow to the area, it's, everything's prepared. Okay. And then you start in with your piano warm up as well. So are there any like hand specific like any, what can I do with just my well, arms? Well, typically because your arm is going to be in this position, yeah, you're using these extensor muscles. Okay. So you want to make sure these are loose. Okay. So what we do is we lock our elbow, bring our hand down, and get a stretch here. Now most people, when they point their thumb down, they get a bit more of a stretch. I don't, I don't feel that at all. And you said that you. I have you, weird. Something's wrong with me. Yeah, you're a little different. I'm special. <laughs> and just adapt to it. So yeah, as long as you're feeling stretched, keep that elbow locked because okay. the muscles cross both joints. Okay. Yeah. That's the most important one. And then you can also do the reversal as well. That's right. And that really that's nice. also gets the, the fingers involved at right. the same time. How and you want to make sure you don't forget your thumb. How, many how much time should I spend doing this? Yep. You don't want to spend too long, so a couple minutes. Okay. So 40 seconds, you can do 40 seconds back and forth a couple times. And then you also don't want to forget the bigger ones here. So for the neck ones, you want to go into neutral, hold onto your chair, and lean down to the one side. The opposite side that I'm holding onto? Yep. Ooh. Yeah, oh, feel stretched through there. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. And then you bring it back, and you come at a forty-five degree angle, and you do the same thing. What's forty? What? So you're gonna be here. <laughs> you're gonna be stretching that way. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. And always come back to neutral. So don't roll it. Okay. Because you can irritate tissue that way. Okay. And then come back to neutral again. Okay. And then bring your head just straight down. Oh, that's so that wonderful. Yeah. I feel like I just feel so great. Doing those stretches. Yeah. Okay. I need to work this into my life. Okay. It so will make a difference. Yeah. I th this is not something that I do when I sit at the piano, and I'm absolutely going to start doing it. Yeah. Okay, the other that. thing is when you're playing, if you're continuously playing and practicing, yeah. you'll get fatigue and you get burning and you'll build up that lactic acid. Yes. So, same thing. You have to get the blood flowing again. Okay. So, for the beginner who's not used to the hours and hours of practice, Set your time for as soon as you feel a little bit of it. Get up, walk around, get okay. the blood flow to your lower body, okay. to your upper body, move your shoulders around, move your head around, and get that blood back in the area because you're going to need the oxygen in those muscles. So I have to wonder for those that are new at the piano and finding it difficult to focus for very for like you know that 15 to 30 minute mark. Maybe part of it is the need to move. Yep. Move the body. Yeah, recharge. The body's just like, yeah. hey, we got to move. Yeah. Okay, I like this. A wiggle break. Yeah, a wiggle break. Yes. Okay, okay. so we've got posture, we've talked about some stretches that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, there are three th sort of things that I hear a lot from our students. One of them is that they are struggling with pain in either their forearms or their fingers. So is that always connected to something like, like a carpal tunnel or arthritis, or can that just be from repetitive playing and not? Yeah, connected. the repetitive part, so at the beginning you can irritate and strain things yes. and you'll get tendonitis, so an inflammation of the tendon. If okay. things continue and you keep irritating and keep things inflamed, yeah. you'll get tendinosis, you get damage. What? Tendonitis and tendinosis? Yeah, you'll get start to get damage in the tendon no. as well as inflammation. Because I was like, tendinosis? Yeah. So you feel those nodules in there, the okay. ones that we work out when you come in for treatment or yes. whomever comes in for treatment. So we get the metal instrument, we loosen all that Is stuff Is that up. what you're doing with the metal instrument of yeah. doom? Of pressure, yeah. It's painful pressure. It's a bit painful. But it's so it. we try to reduce the, the tension in the muscle. Um, but if you're keeping the inflammation out of there, so when things are inflamed, you got to ice it. Take your breaks. Okay. And if you're stretching, yeah. that'll help. Do I have tendinosis? You have repetitive strain. So there's the pro probability that you will get tendinosis if you don't take care of it. Oh, okay. But you do your stretches, you do your icing, you come in for treatment. Yes, I do. So if you're taking care of things, then you can try to avoid it. Okay. Yeah. And that's why when I push here, it feels like I'm dying? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but you're also doing your workouts with heavy weights and yes. stuff too. So you, your body has to break. It needs some breaks, so it has to time to repair. It has okay. to have that time. Um, also, diet. How's your diet? It's magnificent. Yeah, because there are certain foods that help with inflammation and so, some things make it worse. Okay. So you don't avoid your, your red meats and your alcohol. What? Sugar. Sugar's terrible. I'm really good with sugar. Okay. But like steak and wine. I know. I know. <laughs> At least the wine we can. <laughs> right? But um, 
some foods that are, are really good to have are you have your omega three, so you have your your salmon. Salmon's awesome. Okay. So your fish oils are really good. Fish oils. Um, garlic is amazing. Oh, garlic is tasty too. And ginger, and you want your vitamin D as well, so okay. that's great for that. And broccoli. Broccoli. Yeah, this is really good for inflammation. I so. love broccoli. Yeah. So if you're icing, taking your breaks, doing your stretching, proper nutrition. Okay. Drinking it's a lot of water. Help. Yeah, it all helps. So how does that like? If I'm coming to the piano and I know that I'm struggling with arthritis, what does that mean for me? Because I don't know anything about arthritis, but I know that people have asked me about it and say, I've, I mean, I'm arthritic and that this is really difficult for me to practice. Oh, for sure. So there's two, two of the main kinds we talk about are osteoarthritis. So that's like a wear and tear. Okay. So repetitive irritation on the joint and things break down. Okay. So then it becomes more bone on bone. Right. It, it becomes inflamed. It's very sore and you'll start to develop spurs uh -huh. if that happens. So uh, it's more in the in the weight bearing joints. Okay. But if you're putting a lot of stress through your thumb, typically it's the thumb that, yeah. that will be the worst. Um, just because we use it for everything in our in our lives, our remote controls, our phones, our piano. So okay. if you can take breaks from, if you're going to spend a lot of time on piano, maybe don't go on the iPad or whatever that day. Right. Take some breaks. Um, again, you want to do a really good warm up in the morning. So. With our older patients that have arthritic problems, we do get them to soak them in warm water to start the day. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, just get some blood flow. It's like a hot tub nutrition. for your hands. Yeah, and it loosens up, so it gets the muscles and tendons a little bit looser. Okay. And takes some of the discomfort out of the joint. So if I have a struggle with arthritis in my thumbs, yeah. when I'm placing my hands, like this wrist positioning, how, how is this when I'm playing? If I'm doing this, if you're watching me, what am I doing? Yeah, that's good. It doesn't look like a lot of strains going through the hands. So you, okay. have, it, you have it in a nice neutral position, so that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, but it's, if you're doing this all day. Right. If you're doing that for four hours, that's a lot of strain on, on the this. joint. Okay, so maybe more just like a tipping as opposed yeah. to a lift. Again, breaks too. So take your breaks, breaks, loosen up the tissue, do your light stretching. Um, it's important. Okay. Take and then breaks. there's rheumatoid arthritis. So you got to make sure you get the proper diagnosis. So okay. some things do require medicine or medical attention. So okay. um, you just got to make sure you're, you're dealing with the right ones. So. Get checked. Make yeah. sure you know get what's happening with your, with your body. Yeah. Okay, so that covers, so we've covered tendonitis and arthritis. And tendinosis. Tendinosis. What's carpal tunnel? Does that factor in? Uh, if you're getting numbness tingling in these three fingers. Okay. Yeah. Does that happen to you? I don't. I'm a, yeah. I don't know. Uh, typically, um, it's things get blocked up in here. Okay. And then I'll pinch the nerves that supply into these two uh, three fingers. So, okay. Uh, more would be extension issues because you're not really gripping too much. No. It's more the grippy type things that we see. Carpal okay. Tunnel. Okay. Well, um, that's good. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't get it because you're are doing a flexion. There. That's fair. But again, stretching, keep things loose, that'll help with that too. So this might be difficult to answer, but kind of the last thing I wanted to look at was what if you have like an old injury? Mm. Maybe you've had a hand injury or a hand surgery. Is it okay to be working on the piano? Like can this cause more problems or case by case? Yeah, well, yeah. Injuries With injuries, you usually get compensation patterns. So if you have a thing where your elbow is not working properly, you're probably get your shoulder to do more work. Right. So you gotta pay attention. If this is sore, this is probably doing more work and this is probably doing more work. Okay. So you just gotta be aware that you're gonna be straining other things. Okay. So um, just be diligent with your time management and if there's any discomfort. But get treatment if you if you can on, on whatever it is. Get proper diagnosis is super important. Okay. Um, we like to look at things on the internet all the time but they're not always accurate. So. If you can see a professional, it's usually easier to narrow down what you're dealing with, yeah. And then see if you can do something about it. Okay, so take breaks. Take your breaks. Have a proper diet. Super diet. Do the yoga. Do the yoga. Or at least the stretching. Yeah. This was the interesting thing for me, was thinking about how it's not just in the hands. Yeah. Um, so the hips, they count. Oh yeah. How your, you know, your lower, am I using the right word? Lower spine? Yeah. That's all important. Yeah, oh yeah, the balance is super important. If you balance. have that good base of support, you're able to deliver more energy. Um, instead of balancing on the spine and, and working all those muscles just to hold yourself, right? everything is balanced properly and you're able to just use your energy for other things. So feet on the floor is super oh, totally, important. Because yeah. sometimes when I was like younger, I'd practice like, like this sometimes. Yeah. I feel like that might not have contributed to my yeah. Um, life success. Yeah, and keeping a strong core. So we have to exercise and eat well? Is this what you're telling us? 
if you want. Yeah. <laughs> if we want. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, I feel like that's covered pretty much all of the posture-related questions that we've been getting. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with us. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment below. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, and I hope that you have an awesome day.